We have this indelible image in our minds if we're from New Mexico back of the woman running through the desert naked with the dog collar on. You know, a lot of people would say, you're not only a survivor, you saved other women. No, I've never looked at it like that. I just look at it as I saved myself. It's a story of survival like you've never heard before. David Parker Ray's travel trailer. I escaped the David Parker Ray incident. It's led Cynthia Jaramillo and Christine Barber to start helping women work in the street, just as Cynthia once did. Cynthia's story starts here on Central Avenue, a historic highway filled with crime in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's where she met the toy box killer. Mr. Ray, did you kidnap that young woman against her will? Did you take her against her will? After a childhood of abuse and molestation, Cynthia found herself on the streets in Albuquerque, first selling drugs, then selling her body. Probably about 13. And about 13, I was like, I didn't have nothing, so I had to figure out how to, to survive. This born survivor was about to have her survival skills tested to the limits. That day, I don't know what was going through my head that day. Um, I broke all my rules right there. Rule number one, don't get in RVs. When we get to the back of the RV, he pulls out a badge and throws a handcuff on one of my wrists. I'm like, wait, no, 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 this ain't right. You ain't a cop. The man with the handcuffs was David Parker Ray. But as Cynthia reached for the door, something stopped her dead in her tracks. I was like, literally my fingertips were touching the door. When he yelled, Cindy. Cindy is Cynthia's nickname. That freaked me out because I didn't give him my name. I had given him another name. But Ray was talking to the woman who would later be charged as his accomplice, Cindy Hendy. Well, a girl came out from behind a curtain in there in the RV and she shocked me at the cattle prod. Cynthia remembers being dragged to the back of the RV. Then Ray handcuffed her to a cabinet. They both got in the front of the RV and they, they started driving off. And while the wheels of the RV were turning, the wheels in her mind were too. She needed to escape. I unscrewed the, the cabinet where I was handcuffed to. And I remember like getting up on my, on my feet and like kind of like crouching down. And I was like, as soon as the RV stops slow enough, I'm gonna hit the door. So she waited, each second seeming longer than the next, and then. Well, I don't know why he had to slam on his brakes, but it made me tumble. I was loose, my hands were right behind my back, but I was loose. Cindy Hendy is first to notice Cynthia is free. Well, she came to the back with the gun, and then he pulled over, and then he came to the back. Then everything went black. Cynthia would wake up to the sound of Ray's voice on a recorded cassette tape. Okay, we must know what you've been brought here for. A lot of and Your wrists and ankles are chained and you're gagged because you're not going to like the way I do it. You're going to be kept here naked and chained down. I'm going to use you for a sex slave. The FBI says Ray recorded that audio tape in 1993. Cynthia was abducted in 1999, more than 22 years later, hearing his voice. I'm sure that it goes without saying that you will not be given any opportunity to escape. Still takes her back to that night. If I thought that she knew enough to cause serious problems, you would not be turned loose. You would simply disappear. What haunts her even more is knowing she likely was not the first person to hear it. Yeah, the rest of it uh, basically said what was going to happen to you, like what, how he was going to torture you, um, talked about the toy box. The toy box, as Ray called it, was parked behind his home near Elephant Butte. Aerial video shows it hiding in plain sight. Inside, a sex torture chamber with chains, whips, and pulleys. In the center of that room, a gynecological chair where she suffered electric shocks. The more pain that I showed, the more I hurt, the more he got off. Strapped to the chair is where Cynthia spent hours being tortured. The rest of the time, a dog collar around her neck kept her chained to a pole by a bed. A padlock made sure she couldn't escape. But as Ray continued his twisted game for pleasure. So I kind of just stopped responding to it. And I just took it 
it was hard, but I took it. Cynthia started playing her game of survival by studying her surroundings. When they would take me from one room to another or take me to a different spot, I'd see the rules and it would, one of them was don't trust a chained captive. She knew the only way she would walk out alive was to escape. After three days of torture, she got her chance. And I realized she had left the keys on the coffee table. Cindy Hendy got a phone call and would make two crucial mistakes. First, she left Cynthia alone. She got real excited. She went to the back. Second, she left keys to that padlock in plain sight. I put my feet up and I got under the fence and I pulled the table towards me and then I went and I got the keys. Cynthia was on the second key when Cindy runs back in. She got that lamp and she started beating me with it. The lock came loose and I pulled it. I picked up the phone and the ice pick and I dialed 911 and I stabbed her. When she grabbed her head, that's I just jumped. I dropped the phone and I jumped from the bed to the living room floor and just bolted out the door. For the first time in days, Cynthia is outside and free. Her first thought, run. I just ran up the road and a car was passing me and I was banging on, she rolled up her window and she left it cracked and I was begging her for help. By this time, Cynthia was covered in blood, barefoot and naked. The terrifying image is too much for the stranger who drives off. And she locked her door on me. In the distance, Cynthia sees a trailer with lights still on. And I just ran in their door. I didn't even knock. What did you see when you walked in? An elderly lady washing dishes. She was really calm and she kept me calm. And then her husband came in and he's all, I heard noise and he sees me there naked, bloody, bloody, bloody in his eyes. He's just like, he froze in the doorway. The woman calls 911. Her husband helps a stranger standing in their living room covered in blood. She had her husband go get me a robe and cover me. The man kept assuring me I would, that he was not going to let him come and get me. And I'm like, he has a gun. He'll come in here and get me. Authorities caught Ray and Cindy Hendy out looking for Cynthia. The next time Cynthia would see him was in court when Ray was convicted. Cindy was also convicted and served nearly 20 years before being released in 2019. Do I forgive her? Yeah, I forgive her. I think there was a part of her that was David Parker a victim too. Ray was sentenced to more than 223 years for sexually torturing two women, one being Cynthia. He claimed to have abducted 40 women from across the U.S. Since no bodies were ever found, he was never charged and he never will be. Ray died in prison in 2002 by heart attack. Cynthia now pays it forward with her nonprofit Street Safe New Mexico. She and her partner Christine pay for hotel rooms for women on the street to shower and sleep. They also hand out essentials, including clothes, and testify in court when a woman gets raped by a John, making sure the survivor gets the last word. I'm not his victim. I was never his victim. I wish he could have known that. Crystal Gutierrez, KRQE News 13.